Hi, this is Eric White. Sometimes developers building an ASP.NET application want to integrate some OpenXML functionality into their ASP.NET application. You may want to enable to upload an OpenXML document. You may then want to change it in some fashion, transform it in some fashion. And then you want to enable the user to download the modified document. In addition, you might be interested in just enabling the end users to upload documents, or you might be interested in enabling end users to download a document that you are generating for them in your ASP.NET application. In this screencast, I present the smallest possible ASP.NET application that enables a user to upload a document, the ASP.NET application then modifies the document using the OpenXML SDK, and then it enables the end user to download the modified document. First thing let's do is let's create an ASP.NET web application. Start Visual Studio. Click File, New Project. This application will be an ASP.NET web application. You can find the installed template under Visual C Sharp Web, and it's going to be a .NET Framework 4 application. Pick some location to put the application. It doesn't really matter where. And name it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter what you name it. You don't need to create a directory for creating this solution. And click OK. First thing to do is to add references to the OpenXML SDK. So I'll right click on References and click Add References. I'll go to Recently Referred to Assemblies and I am going to pick DocumentFormat.OpenXML and I'm going to select Windows Base and add those two assemblies to this solution and close it. Next thing let's do is let's lay out a few web controls for this application. First of all I'm going to change this heading to welcome to an ASP.NET open XML application. I don't need those paragraphs. Let's add a file upload control I'll change this name of this control to File Upload Control. Now before I insert my next control, I'm going to insert a paragraph with a line height of 0.5m just to give a little bit of spacing between these controls. Now I'm going to add a label control. I'll change the ID here to LBL message. We need a place to put a message if the user doesn't upload a document or if the end user uploaded an invalid document and the OpenXML SDK threw an exception. Don't need any text in this control. I'll add another spacing paragraph below that label. Now I'll add a button here. I'll change the ID to btn upload and the text should be upload an OpenXML document into the web application. And again I'm going to add a spacing paragraph below that and I'm going to add one more button here. I'll change the ID to button download and the text will be download the modified open XML document. Let's open the design view and see if it looks correct and it does. I'll double click on upload an open XML document into the web application so that I can add some code for the click event. 
Before I add the code for the click event, I am going to add a few more usings. I need to have system.io, I want system.xml, I want system.xml.link, and also the using for the OpenXML SDK. One more thing before I write the click event, I want to put in my two favorite extensions for working with OpenXML and Linked XML. The first is this extension method getX document, and the other is the extension method putX document. The getX document method deserializes the XML in the main document part or whatever part that you pass to getX document, and it then adds that X document as an annotation onto the OpenXML part. And that way you can call getX document as many times as you want and you won't be deserializing the X document over and over again from the part. And the put X document then just takes that X document that's on the annotation and streams it back into the OpenXML package. I'm now ready to add the code for the button upload click. I'll paste in a bit of code here. Some of this code is just standard code that you use when you are using the file upload control. So first of all, you here test if the file upload control has a file. And if the file upload control doesn't have a file, then this code sets the label message to you have not specified a file. And then after determining that the file upload control has a file, then this code gets the file name from the file upload control and it adds this file name into the session state. We want to keep that file name around so that when the user downloads their modified document, they are downloading a document with the same file name as what they uploaded. And then after saving away that file name, this code creates an instance of the memory stream class. It then writes all of the bytes from the file upload control into the memory stream. Once the code has a memory stream, then it's able to open up the document using the OpenXML SDK passing the memory stream. This code here is my standard code that I use when I want to demonstrate modifying an OpenXML document. All this code does is get the body element from the main document part. It adds a paragraph at the beginning of the document and then it puts the main document part back into the OpenXML package. After completing that operation, and after dropping out of the using statement for the creation of the OpenXML word processing document, then the next thing that this code does is it can call to array on the memory stream to get a byte array of the modified OpenXML document and it can set that byte array into the state of the ASP.NET application so that we have that byte array around when the user clicks the button to download their modified OpenXML document. Now we're ready to write the code to download the modified OpenXML document. I'll double click on the download control. Now I have an event handler where I can write the click event for the download button. Here's the bit of code to process the download button click. First thing that this code does is get that byte array from the session state. It then sets up the response. It clears the response, sets the content type. It gets the file name that the user specified when the user uploaded the document. And it creates a header and it puts that file name in the appropriate place in the header. It then does a binary write of the byte array, flushes the response, and calls response.end. We're now ready to run this application. Before we run the application, I'll show you here I have a document test.docx sitting on my desktop and this document has a single paragraph in it. I'll close Word. 
Now I'll run the web application. Here is the web application that's running. I'll click Browse. And right from the desktop, I'll click test.docx. And I'll upload that OpenXML document into the web application. At this point in time, the web application has that document stored in the session state, and it has modified that document by this point in time. The user can click download the modified OpenXML document, and as usual, Internet Explorer puts up this message down here asking whether you want to open or save test.docx from localhost. For convenience right now, I'll just click open. It runs this security scan, and it shows the document, and sure enough, the document has hello world at the beginning of the document. I could have just as easily saved the document as opened it, of course. The key point about this code is it's pretty short code. It enables an end user to upload an OpenXML document into an ASP.NET web application. It then uses the OpenXML SDK to modify that document and then it enables the end user to download that modified document. And this code has never needed to save the OpenXML document to the disk on the web server. Everything is done in memory. I've attached all of this code to the blog post on OpenXML Developer that introduces this video. If you didn't come to this video from OpenXML Developer, then you can find the link back to OpenXML Developer in the description of this video below. And that's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. See you next time.